What's up guys, my name is Jaylee Cook 5 and welcome back to another few chapters of the Breaking Point series. We're going to be displaying chapter 10, 11 and 12 in this episode. Obviously with a sudden retirement for Devin Butler's career, we are now looking for a new teammate if you wasn't aware. And it looks to be, it might just be, Callie Mayer. Obviously we're going to get into some cinematics and show the detail. But yeah, that would be an interesting move for Connor Sport, especially keeping it in the family also. So we're going to get in straight into things and see what unfolds. But if we are going to hit our targets, we need another driver, a permanent one, and fast. But we are mid-season. It's impossible. So given the circumstances, do you think you can grant us a bit of leeway on the contract? I have the projections. If Connorsport doesn't reach fifth place in the constructors this season, the returns simply aren't worth my time. That was always the deal. And it still is. But with a little extra time, perhaps we'd stop. The deal stands. And without Devon driving, there's now little of interest for me beyond the contract. It's just business. There must be something we can do. So, legacy is obviously important to you, David. As a father, I, I totally get that. So if Devon, your son, can't drive, how about your daughter? Why don't we give the seat to Kelly? No. California will not be signed to Connorsport. Why not? Just, <laughs> just think of the commercial opportunities for the team that signs her, hmm? Forget legacy. <laughs> oh, we'd be... You'd be making history. And you'll be giving a phenomenal talent her first break into F1. It's the right thing to do. Come on, you know she deserves it. The daughter. You took her mother's name to spite me. Nah, she'll never say yes. Why don't you leave that to me? Contract still stands, Ackerman. Fifth place, or I'm out next season. One problem at a time, eh? So that is an interesting conversation between the most important men in Connor Sport currently. We have a teammate for the moment though and it will be Noah Bell. Unfortunately missed the start because I actually didn't press the record button but we'll go from here. Lap 5 of 17, Russell and Norris battling it out with Sainz and Leclerc both teammates battling it out also as we look to go past Lando Norris gaining a nice bit of speed but he is late on the brakes and he's got the apex with him also but we managed to go on the outside of him and away we go from Norris really good overtake and we seem to be progressing really well if you wasn't aware we did start P16 not a good qualifying session from Aiden Jackson but it seems to be that he is getting a decent start and we are in with the big boys as we can see the top five as of the moment we've got Russell Sainz and Leclerc in front of us and I do believe the next two would be Perez and Verstappen. Just kind of keeping with the pack as of the moment, we just want to see if we can kind of maintain the speed going through these corners. Obviously a new layout to Catalonia that I haven't tried out before, but it's definitely a faster circuit now. As we go on the very long straight, we're hitting speeds of up to 200 miles an hour as we have three people in front of us right now. Steins, Leclerc, Russell, all battling it out really deep into the corners. Nowhere for me to go. I was trying going for the overtake, but it wasn't to be, and we have to be patient. Lap 6 of 17 now, so we do have time. 11 laps to be able to change this race around as we are battling out with signs now the club behind us he's made a place downwards as we look to try and see if we can overtake Carlos Sainz wheel to wheel going through the S's as we look to see if we can yeah that's quite nice that is a decent bit of break in there and we are past Carlos Sainz this is a really really good bit of momentum that we're gaining now 
we are in fourth position, we are hitting the objectives, we need to secure as many points as possible and finishing within the top 12 so we are definitely doing good a purple sector in sector 1 coming to the end of sector 2 we have Perez and Russell battling it out but we don't care about either of them and the double overtake is made and away we go from them this is unbelievable with the speed a green sector 2 also so we could be on for a fastest lap even though oh yeah we have hit them recently but George Russell is currently at the fastest lap as you literally hit the accelerator as hard as you can barely any braking going through that section and before you hit onto the straight where you have the DRS activated if you are within a second. No fastest lap being done but a good lap in that being said. We are going to be going on to the medium soon though. This is not a long lot of races, a lot of laps already left until we are able to pit as we go through. Just trying to maintain the position now. We've got myself and Verstappen in, so P1 and P2. Verstappen still three seconds away, kind of trying to get the gap there but a real late kind of turn as we kind of run into the pits as we look to see if we can get a decent pit stop away looking for a 2.5, 2.4 as always as long as we get the optimal Verstappen pitting, a lot of them pitting actually also for Sainz pitting, Russell goes ahead, Perez goes ahead so no double stack for uh, Red Bull and then a Hamilton pits also as we look to go into the pits 2.4, it should be done, lovely stuff out the pits we go and away we go Slotting just behind Verstappen, so we probably are a bit closer coming out the pits as we have people behind us also. Gohan Joe looks to be able to go overtakes us in the kind of section where we're coming out of the pits and he also overtakes Verstappen. Him being on the softer tyre, I don't think it will last very long as we know pitting at lap 10, our tyres were pretty shot. So I'm pretty sure that he'll have no kind of put up for a fight as we look to try and overtake Verstappen as well as Joe. Obviously we'll jump the positions when people go into the pits. But it would be nice to try and get past him to see if Verstappen seems to fall a little bit behind him then gaining a little bit of time on him. We pass Verstappen, that's a really good overtake there as we look to have Guangzhou, Guangzhou sorry, a really good bit of slipstream. We go on the inside, the outside sorry, and then we are able to go past. So it looks to be now we're we going on to this bit of straight. We won't get DRS, but we are a second behind Joe and Verstappen. Verstappen will get DRS on Joe, but Joe will not get DRS on me. So no gains being made by either driver as Verstappen looks to pass Joe on the, on the straight and then looks to be able to see if he can get any closer to myself. Over the checkered flag now and Russell's in the pits, Perez in the pits and they're not fast enough in the pits nor are they were on track. And that is in P1 now, so we are in first position for Connor Sport. This is not the first time they've been in this sort of position with Devin Butler getting a decent win. It's a shame to see him not racing anymore. He's definitely brought that bit of fire to Connor Sport and the drama also. Completing lap 11 of 17, a nice gap between myself and Verstappen. 3.4 seconds and a fastest lap, so we look to go better on the medium set of tyre, which is a really good thing for us. Obviously the softer is usually the faster tyre, but we are making the mediums work around Catalonia as we look to try and build on that and gain a bigger gap between myself and Verstappen. Signs in no sort of looking in terms of he would be getting anywhere near us, but Verstappen looks to be able to kind of get a bit closer as we can see him in our rear view mirror. One second splits the gap now, so he's made up two seconds within these X amount of laps. So he's doing really well. We go over the camber there, kind of clipping it. Not doing too bad, but we do lose a bit of time. Five hundredths of a second now. Verstappen will get DRS, and it'll be interesting to see if he can get any sort of slipstream or ERS that he has at the moment using the DRS. We have no ERS left. Verstappen gl literally glides past us with no effort made whatsoever. No defending to be able to do on, on that sort of move. Verstappen had the faster bit of pace going through that straight and the corner, and we have to let him go now. Two laps left and it seemed to be that this might be the end for our race in terms of going for P1. Verstappen is well away, 500 of a second splits us, one second splits us now as we look to complete lap 16 and 17 going on to the last lap of the race. The chase is definitely on to see if we can get any sort of DRS to gain a bit of time. One second splits us at the moment so we won't get any DRS going through this particular straight but we can see if we can make any time up in the corners and gain a little bit of time. Really bad over the camber there and we're going to lose more time. 1.1 seconds, 1.1 still. Going down to one second, so yeah, we're still within this sort of kind of bit. If we make up, say, 200, 300 of a second, we can go within that bit where we have DRS. 1.1, 1.2, now he's gaining time. Don't think our tyres have anything left in them, even though they are mediums and they should have a longer lifeline, especially with only being on seven laps might have pushed them a little bit too hard as we go up the hill before we hit the DRS straight 
one second, 1.1 second. Yeah, I don't think we're going to even get DRS on this straight, meaning that we don't. I think this is probably the end in terms of being able to try and catch up with Max Verstappen. But this will still be a phenomenal race being in P2 for Aiden Jackson. One of the best. I think that is his best result in the Connor Sport team also. So this will be an amazing result regardless of a win or not. Drifting out of that corner as you can see the tyres have gone. Onto the gravel we go as we look to try and fight the car back onto the track. Making sure that we're not going to crash out of this Catalonia G Grand Prix. And yeah, we do, we do maintain it in the end, but three second splits, myself and Science, we did gain some time in there. And Aidan Jackson waves his fist in absolute jubilant form as he celebrates P2 and an unbelievable race. So it's Aidan Jackson propping up Connorsport here today. But the big news off the track is the speculation about this team. Whether or not they'll see out the season with their current lineup. Well, I think they'll have to sign a new driver, Crofty. Is the gamble worth taking? Well, the mid-season signing would get us all talking, I'm sure, but time will tell. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. Well, Cotter Sport are in a bit of an odd situation right now. So, just tell me, what is it like for you today? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that side of things, that's not really my job. I, I wish Devon well, but uh, it doesn't really matter to me who the other driver is. So, I'm out there to drive the car as best as I can. And that's all there is to it. Everything else is for Casper and the team to worry about. Most importantly, how is Devon? And how are you finding it without your teammate? If you know Devon like I do, then you know he's going to find a way to come back to F1. <laughs> I don't know for sure if he drives again. I, I hope he does, but even if he only comes back to annoy me, of course he'll be back. Well, there's a lot of talk about what happens if Devon doesn't return. Would Connor Sport be looking for a new driver, do you think? It's not for me to say, but I think it could be a real opportunity for the team to make an exciting signing. Uh, there's a lot of talent out there hungry for a shot in F1, and... Connor Sport could find themselves in a perfect position to offer them one. That's great, thank you. Hey, Casper, you wanted to speak to me? Yes, I did. Shoot. Uh, nothing major, really. Um, to be honest, I just wanted to thank you. Oh. What for? I'm, you know, just doing my job. No, it's more than that. <laughs> well, I know why you stayed on the team. And, uh... But I won't lie to you, it, it's not been easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can say that again. Yeah, but you really stepped up. It's good for me to know that I've got someone like you to rely on. Always. Yeah. Look, Aiden, I'll warn you, things may not get any easier, at least not for a while. But, um, well, we've got something in the pipeline, a potential new driver and a damn good one. Who is it? I can't say, not, not yet. It's a bit of a gamble, but if they agree, we could have something special. Nice. And, um, how is Devon? Fine. I think... Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, Davidov has closed the door on that one, but... Yeah, he tells me Devon is in a good place, though. Oh, that's good, that's good. Just keep doing what you're doing, okay? And now, just get out of here. Of course. I'll catch you later, Casper. 
Well, that was interesting. A real good kind of bit of praise from Caster Ankerman, his previous teammate, and now his team principal, just to be able to say, hold on in there. Obviously, it's going to be a bumpy ride, but it's just seeing what it will bring to the Connor Sports team. Results like that for Aidan Jackson, if they keep coming, obviously there will be a definitely boost in the team morale and everything else. But it'll be interesting to see who our teammate will be, and we will sh shall see what decision is being made. Why are you hesitating? You've always dreamt of racing in F1. Not like this. Do you know what he did? Oh, your father? He refused to support me. Said he'd only fund one of his children. Said Devon had better prospects. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that. Mum used the divorce settlement to help me out, but... And you're only here because he sent you. No. This was my idea, my decision. And this is me asking you, Callie, not your father. We need a replacement and ask for you because I know how good you are. And that's the truth. I always said I'd do it on my terms, not his. I'll look out for you, just like I did in F2. Will you keep him away from me? I'll do everything in my power, everything, to make sure that all you have to think about is driving. Have we got a deal? You might never get this opportunity again. You know that. Davidoff, they stopped me entering the garage just because Callie's in there. It's ridiculous. We've had this conversation. You need to give her space. I'll humor you for now, Ackerman, but I don't like being told where I can and can't go around here. Don't forget, you talked me into this. What does that mean? Talked you into what? Signing Callie in the first place. I'm just allowing you to take credit for it, that's all. Yeah, it sounds like you're trying to blame me. Well, if you're right about it. There'll be no blame to allocate, will there? Anything else? You're a busy man. I'll let you go. I would say after listening to that, Davidoff definitely doesn't like the idea of her of his daughter being the second driver for Connorsport. This is going to be interesting to see how this kind of plans out and, and what is being done in terms of it. Obviously, I feel like there's going to be a bit of tension between her and her father, but it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds later on in the story. History has made here today as Callie Mayer, Connorsport's latest signing, becomes the first female driver of the modern era to participate in an F1 race. What a moment. I've got goosebumps. Now, for those of you wondering at home, only a handful of women have entered at least one Grand Prix over the years, but none have even had the opportunity to qualify since 1992. Italy's Giovanna Amati, for those of you wondering. So today is very much a new dawn here in Baku. And Maya was impressive in qualifying, so let's see what the Grand Prix has in store for her. Yeah, I have to say, it is quite a tight-knit pack out there. Biggest competition all round. I really wouldn't want to call this one. Indeed. We've seen some brilliant driving here today, especially from young Callie Mayer. She seems to have made the transition to F1 as if she was born for it. So here we go then, Callie Mayer in F1. The last time that we played Callie Mayer was in the F2 when she won the championship in Abu Dhabi. As we now are in Baku, a really tricky, tricky street circuit as we make our first overtake being Nick De Vries. 
Our objective is to catch up to Jackson before lap 8 and then our bonus is to finish in the top 8 also. So let's see what we can do and see how hard we can push the car. A debut race for Cali Mayer and we can see if we can make it one of the best she may ever have. On the long straight now and we can see we've got Norris in front of us 1.3 seconds and then obviously Jackson is the objective to be able to catch up before lap 8. He is in 4.5 seconds away. Again, a bit of nice, decent speed, as we say. It's set to three. We get a purple one there. And now we are ca caught up to Norris, five hundredths of a second. And if we are able to maintain this, we will get DRS on the next straight, allowing ourselves with an overtake opportunity. Really fast into there, but we do drift out with the back end, trying to hang out a little bit there, trying to maintain the car as best as possible, not allowing it to go into the tyre wall. As we now go wheel to wheel with Lando Norris gliding past him, we are so fast on that straight and gaining that DRS with him. Probably didn't have any overtake also. He was definitely a sitting duck and we glide past him. Being able to go into position 14. Sonoda now on our peripheral. 600 of a second, 400 of a second now. A really dodgy overtaking point, but we're going to take it. We've got a purple sector 1 and we're showing it there with a probably purple sector 2 the way we're carrying on. A really good overtake past Sonoda and he's sitting there wondering what even happened to be honest. I, had, I didn't want to duck out of it and it was full commitment to say the least, but that could have definitely gone wrong. Aiden Jackson now on her horizon. We have got lap 6 of 13, so if we overtake him at any point in this time now, we have got that objective. So Here comes Callie Mayer, closing in on her teammates. She's practically on top of me. Aiden, calm down, you're on different strategies, just let Callie pass. Okay, Callie, Aiden's going to let you pass at the next corner, let's go. Copy. Will Mayer get past her teammate now? Here she comes, with this contact. Contact between the two Connor Sport drivers. Jackson's out. He gets the worst of it. Mayor's clear. Oh, Jackson's damage looks bad. I think you're right, Crofty. His race is over. Mayor seemed to catch Jackson unawares, though. I'm not sure why. What was that? What did she wait for me to move over on the exit? OK, Aiden, are you all right? It's just another butler. I know, Kelly. I'm sorry about that, but it's happened now. It's over. Let's get your head down and focus. Come on. We'll talk about it later. Well, who expected that then? Even though Devin Butler isn't in the team anymore, he's definitely got the family tradition with Callie Mayer and another horrific bit of kind of chaos for Connor Sport as she wipes Aiden Jackson out. Aiden getting the team instructions to be able to let Callie Mayer pass because she have having the fastest lap, but a really weird overtaking point and he was willing to give the space when on the next corner. Definitely something strange there. And are we going to see another rivalry within the team? doesn't matter what teammate Aiden Jackson seems to have, it just seems to be that there is all sorts of rivalry and this is definitely going to cause a storm in the press. All focus on Callie Mayer though as she is still in the race competing as we look to try and gain some more positions now. Objective is to finish in the top 10 with the bonus with finishing in the top 8. As we look to go past Ocon, we are able to gain a bit of time on him. And our next person to try and overtake for the objective would be George Russell. Really interesting to see him 10th place, and that is an unlikely one to be. As we look to see if we can overtake him at any point on this straight, late on into the breaks, and he's really early, kind of bottling out of that situation. And we are able to go past him without any collision. Up into P10 now, and if we are able to gain two more places, we are going to be on P8. Perez in P9, so there seems to be the unlikely drivers in the top positions, with the top drivers in the bottom positions. Two purple sectors as we look to try and complete the fastest lap on the set of medium tyres. If we're lucky, we might gain DRS 900 of a second. The front wing should go up, and yes, it does. We've got DRS, so we should gain some more time and a fastest lap also as we look to go over the chequered line. Fastest that being a 151.198 as we literally, I don't even know how we did that. Perez was turning the corner thinking that no one's behind him and I had a fair distance between myself and Sergio Perez. But we completely dive bomb him and eke out the tiniest bit of space. 
possible and we are through now looking to try and gain our bonus objective Lance Stroll in front of us and he seems to be going fairly slow through these corners as we see to be if we can find another overtake on this bit of straight late on into the brakes he goes on the inside where the apex is but are luckily for us we are able to maintain our speed and everything else a real big good bit of precision precision sorry as we go up the hill through the corners looking go into the straight now with Pierre Gasly two seconds so it will take a little bit of time to be able to gain to go in front of him lap 9 of 13 now we haven't got long left four laps left now purple sector two so we look to try and go even faster but I don't think we will in the sector three Pierre Gasly holding us up and we nearly go into the back of him there he's trying to hold the P7 position but we have got the DRS and we have used our ERS also and we are now wheel to wheel with Pierre Gasly having the better straight speed on the final straight going over the checkered flag lap 10 out of 13 and away we go for these last three laps as we look to see if we can try and gain one more position obviously five seconds is going to be a lot to make up but we will try our best we seem to be doing very well and we are going very fast in this Baku Grand Prix we are looking now with Hamilton 700 of a second and he seems like he's a little bit slow through those corners also we seem to be really fast in this section of the track and that is really good because we are able to gain DRS no one in front of him so he's got no DRS Again, another sitting duck in this Baku Grand Prix as we look to see if we can go late on into the breaks, and so we do. Hamilton not expecting that one either, and we up into the top six now. Alonso in front of us, 1.7 seconds. Piastri being two seconds. We might even be able to get into the top four at this rate. P3 is pretty much long gone, but P4 I would definitely take with the circumstances that Cali Mayer has had to face this Grand Prix long on this straight now no DRS I don't think no we have got DRS Alonso has also a little bit of a DRS train can kind of happening as we look to go on this far straight before we hit the tight tricky corners Alonso on the left Piastri on the right Alonso covering his space wheel to wheel into that corner and it's who's got the more bottle and Alonso has in that situation I have to duck out of that one otherwise there would have been a collision we see to be able to kind of try and overtake him on this straight now as he will get DRS also but so will I trying to avoid the wall there as we drift into that corner slipstream being gained by Alonso a probably bit of a dirty air also coming from Alonso's engine as we try to get out of that and go wheel to wheel as we look today he's going past Piastri and so am I but am we going to make a double overtake and yes we are we become fastest out of the train of three that we had have and we bang straight into the wall there and I think we've made yeah we have made some damage to our front wings so we're going to have to be careful we've had enough collisions this race so we do not want to be DNFing out of this one now we have lap 12 of 13, only two laps left as we look to gain a bit of time on the people behind us making it an easier Grand Prix. Race winner being Charles Leclerc, we're not going to get on the podium but we are going to be a P4 for Cali Mayer's first race and what a race it was. It had everything, it had controversy, it had real determination and it had a decent finish at the end of it as she crosses the line. She won't be celebrating too much because she knows what she's going to have to deal with in the press. But that is definitely a good result for the young woman who makes a, such a mark in this F1 season. Do you feel extra pressure at Connor Sport? It must be difficult with your dad looking over your shoulder. 
look, it's F1. It's not possible for me to feel any more pressure than I already do. So no, it's not an issue. Kelly, have you felt any pushback from anyone in the F1 world, just with you being the first female driver in the sport? No, everyone's been amazing. And I'm not the first, I'm just the latest. How's your brother? Are you really just keeping his seat warm? Uh, you'd have to ask him that. Um, but he is getting the help that he needs. And no, I have no intention of giving up this seat. What happened out there between you and Aiden today? Uh, it's just a mix-up. Um, I, I thought he was letting me through on the entry, but he clearly had other ideas. We spoke to him earlier, and he said he was deliberate on your part. Any comment on that? Uh, it was just a misunderstanding. You've always gone by mayor, and now you're in a team financed by your father, driving in your brother's seat. Would you go back to the butler name? Should have expected it, right? I thought you did. That's not what I mean. I mean, I'm a woman. I get it. I'm happy to talk about it. Then what is it? Well, it's always the same, isn't it? So you're a woman, and then every question about Dad, about Devon, about the butler, name. Just forget about it. Oh, I can never get away from it, can I? The only question about the race was about Aiden. Well, you know, maybe if we'd let it run a little longer, there would have been... Casper? Don't defend them. Sorry, you're right. Sorry. <sighs> Look, it's fine. I'll be faster next time. The incident at Baku. Do you think she did it on purpose? She did do it on purpose. Yeah. Check the footage. So you didn't warn to her? We weren't the best of friends, no. Hey, Mum. Callie, I couldn't be prouder, darling. Well done. Oh, thanks, Mum. It was a good race. Felt great out there. Oh, it was a, a good, good race. Oh, uh, no, what is it? What, what do you mean, what is it? What's what? I can hear it in your voice, Mum. It was a good race. No, it's nothing. Go on. No, no, it's just that... Do it on purpose, did you? <laughs> when you clipped poor Aiden. I can't believe you're even asking me. Did you really raise your daughter to behave like that? Well, I'm really not sure. It was an accident, Mum. I'm I'm hanging up. Oh, of course it was. Uh, bye, darling. Lots of love. A lot of questions being faced Callie's way and she looks to be able to unfold within the pressure that she is facing. A big task for Callie Mayer and this is huge for her. All of these questions being faced, the controversy with Aidan Jackson, it is not looking good on Connor Sport and a lot of people are talking on social media in the press and the way she pressed in terms of going with no comment, that is not a good idea and not the best way of going about it. A lot of controversy to be made and a lot of lessons to be learnt. Still, they just need an angle for Silverstone. Paid no attention. But they're right, aren't they? It's not like Kali and Aiden are suddenly treating each other like teammates. They just need time. It took me a while to warn to Aiden back in the day. <sighs> well, that's because you were a grumpy old man. <laughs> yeah. Well, something's never changed, I guess. Ha! Now you're just grumpier and older. I'll leave you to it. Ciao. Bye. So here we go then, we are in Silverstone, a home GP for many being Mayor and Jackson as we look to see if we can get these objectives. So the first one is overtake Jackson before lap 9 and the bonus is to finish in the top 10. We are P16, 
Jackson in front of us and P. Astry in front of him. As we look to see, he is on the fastest lap at the moment, so he's doing all right as we see if we can gain any time on him whatsoever. A little bit late on the curb there, going over the grass, doing the uh, groundsman's job as we go over to these corners here. I love this bit of the track, it's so free-flowing and you can literally shift from left to right in a matter of seconds. As we look to see if we can overtake Aidan Jackson now, on the DRS we go and we are easy to be able to kind of get past him and see if we can now head towards the pack that we have in front of us. Oscar Piastri being one of them and Pierre Gasly also fighting with the car here trying to gain as much time as possible as we can see in the position that we are and the laps that we have got left. Not many laps whatsoever, only six being able to have to change this race around and gain as many points as possible. As I say, Oscar Piastri in front of us and then we're now looking to overtake him and that's before the DRS point. Let's see if we can now overtake Pierre Gasly as we're going to get some DRS. Pierre isn't as he is two seconds behind Nick De Vries and he is defending his spot but late on the brakes we go and we do make a collision with Pierre Gasly, him backing into the right rear of my wing and Will as we look to try and go past him without too much collision being made, no warning by the FIA and now we go on lap for 8 of 13, Nick De Vries in front of us, 1.5 seconds and we nearly go into the wall there, have to check on the front wing to make sure everything is good and Jesus I'm not too even sure what happened there. A wobble on the wheel and a lot of feedback through the wheel causing a upset nearly. Nick De Vries now in front of us, two purple sectors and we overtake him with absolute ease. He's not putting any sort of defence up and that is a fastest lap with a 133.8. That is a good lap by Cali Mayer as we look to progress in this British GP. And now we have Joe and Alonso in front of us also. We should get DRS on this sector. Actually, no, 1.3 seconds, 1.2. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get DRS on this point. But we are gaining enough time to be able to try and overtake him at another point. 600 per second, 300 per second, 200 per second that we are past Joe. Not even any bit of action with him as we literally have more speed going through that straight. And he only has to allow the space as we look to now go past Fernando Alonso. This will be on the bonus if we are able to do so. And we're going to get DRS on this straight. Not to, I think he's just shy of getting DRS from in front of him. And yeah, he hasn't got any as he looks a bit fragile in this straight. And we are literally putting everything into it. Hands thrown in the air by Cali Mayer as there's a collision with Fernando Alonso. And boy, oh boy, does she love a bit of drama. But nothing comes of it too much. And we go past Fernando Alonso. Another fastest lap by Cali Mayer. And Jesus, she is getting her toe down. As we go through this fast bit of the track, Lando Norris, Carlos Sainz in front of us, P9 and P8 up for grabs, three laps left also as we go past Lando Norris, now looking to try and go past Carlos Sainz, hitting the long straight and we're going to get a bit of DRS also but we might overtake him just beforehand, he's defending the spot really well and we have to maintain our speed but we should be able to overtake him as long as he doesn't put too much of a fight up, he's maintaining it, he is maintaining the position but we are later on the brakes, wheel to wheel though still as we go through the corner and we go on the apex having a little bit of the track that is more, better suited for us as we now go through the bit before we go onto the long straight. Kind of hitting the halfway mark in this circuit now when you are on these sort of lap times. Overtake back marker being messaged and I do believe that is a Haas car in front of us, it is whether it is Magnussen or Nico Hulkenberg. Nico Hulkenberg lets us through and he doesn't hold us up whatsoever and we are past him now. Sometimes you find where the back markers hold you up really badly and even when you're not even racing with them and they're not technically in the race either, they seem to hold you up. Carlos Sainz 1.3 seconds behind, Lano Norris 1.8 seconds behind, Sergio Perez being the next people to overtake and there seems to be a bit of a kind of trend going on. Perez, Russell and Leclerc in 6th, 5th and 4th I do believe that is. Perez trying to overtake George Russell as he gains a nice bit of speed through that corner. Getting the slipstream also as they pull a slight bit away as we are looking to go late on the brakes. We overtake Sergio Perez and a really good one of that, really clean at the same time. As we look to find if we can get onto the podium now. We're on the last lap but we have got Russell Ocon and Leclerc in front of us. We're all going to get DRS apart from Leclerc so it will be interesting to see what happens. Our front wings are activated. Russell to the left, Ocon to the right. No overtake going to be made on this sort of corner. Russell defends really well. We go on the outside but we gain so much speed through there. We take Ocon with us also. We are past and we are through. Leclerc in our sights now. We've got halfway through the lap and we could... We could just overtake him. We're going to have a new, another DRS point at this, at this sector of the race now also. 
as we look to go onto that part of the track going through the corners here such a fast section also this track is unbelievable I absolutely love it as we try and use as much ERS as possible a purple, se purple sector you can see how much we're pushing wheel to wheel we're going to be with Charles Leclerc as we go late on into the brakes and this is unbelievable an overtake of dreams for Callie Mayer as she is in P3 this would be an unbelievable finish a fourth and a third in two Grand Prix being the new star of Connor Sport and definitely putting herself on the map checkered flag being great now and we are now P3 that was an unbelievable performance by Callie Mayer such kind of gratitude and everything else being shown and we are able to gain the podium you see this is just another example of the Connor Sport drivers antagonising each other yeah we've got to look at Ackerman as well he's the one that can sort this situation out so far that he's letting them run wild his job is to keep control and no matter what the season no matter what the driver Connor Sport just can't seem to gel as a team see you've got to ask the question really what will it take After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. This is your first ever F1 race at Silverstone in front of the home fans. So just try to put into words what that means to you. Oh, I mean, I love it. The, the fans always remind me that motorsport is bigger than the drivers. It's bigger than the teams. It's this whole community of people who come together just to enjoy the sport. And yeah, the home fans are always going to feel special. Well, I have to say, it was tight out there once again between you and Aiden. You're not giving each other much space, are you? <laughs> I'm happy to give him space, uh, but figuring each other out on a track is a process. It takes time, and it needs to work both ways. Right now, I feel like he's being a bit more excitable on the track than I'd like, but I hope we will get there. <laughs> Now, naturally, there has been a lot of speculation about the role of your father, Davidoff Butler, in securing your seat at Connor Sport. Just what do you say to the critics? Okay, I'm not taking any more questions about my father. Ask him about his involvement. Well, thank you for chatting with us. Great to have your time. I know, I ended the interview, I need to be more patient, blah, blah, blah. You need to win the press over, my darling, not make an enemy of them. Yeah, yeah. Natalie Pinkham, Callie, of all people. I just get annoyed when people ask me about Dad, that's all. I know, but she's only doing her job, poor woman. I'm sure she understands that sometimes people don't like the questions. She's on your side, you do know that. This isn't about Natalie Pinkham, Mum. Well, it is, and it isn't. Look, I will be nicer to her in the future. Happy now? I just hope you are. Great race today, darling. Thanks, Mum. I've got stuff to do, OK? Well... It's going right on the track, but is it going right in general? Because it seems to be that Connor Sport is in the limelight for no kind of good reasons whatsoever. 
being told how to deal with the press, how to do this, how to do that, how to answer this. This is a massive step in Callie Mayer's career. And may it be the end in some ways in terms of how it started. I hope not though and I hope she pulls through this and is able to shine in F1. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe for more content just like this one. And don't forget to hit the notification button so you never miss a video. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.